Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Affirming Reflections live stream that happens every Monday at noon. I'm um, just going to wait a few more seconds for folks to um, join me today. Uh, and we'll get started on our reflections for the day. Hello, Richard. How are you? <clears throat> all right. Brittany, hello. Hope you're all doing well. All right. Um, so I had a plan for the affirming reflections for today, um, but I have postponed that topic and I'll be talking about that next week. Um, essentially, I felt very called to talk about what's happening down in the States and here in Canada. Um, I felt called to talk about it. I felt like I would be missing an opportunity to use my platform if I didn't talk about it. Um, so yeah, so today I'm gonna use this live stream to kind of share a little bit about um, a queer reflection behind everything that's happening in the States and Canada around police brutality, um, activists and communities that are talking about um, having justice for the black community, things like that. Because I think it's important for us as LGBTQ2S plus people and allies who uh, and allies of the queer community um, to support and be allies to other groups as well. Uh, Richard says, are you, hello, uh, are you wonderful? Hello. Serving ministries career. Yes. Hello. I am doing great. How are you? Brittany, hello. And I see a few others. Uh, as I reflect on, on what's happening around uh, the US, I want to start off by stating some terminology that I think is very important for everyone to know, but as well as to, to help out folks throughout what I'm going to be talking about so that they know what I'm talking about, what I'm referencing. Um, there is a, I wouldn't say a term, but more of an initialism. Uh, that is Q-T-B-I-P-O-C. I'll put that in the chat here. Uh, and it's pronounced Q-T-B-I-P-O-C. Um, Q-T-B-I-P-O-C. And essentially what that is, is that it is a initialism that stands for queer, transgender, black, indigenous, people of color. Other versions maybe you've seen such as uh, Q-T-B-I-P-O-C or Q-P-O-C. Um, the reason for having this acronym or this initialism is that folks with the intersections of gender, sexuality, and race have a vastly different lived experience than those who do not. And often use, and this, this term QT BIPOC is often used um, to pr promote those spaces um, and promote that type of education uh, around gender, sexuality, and, and race. Another term that I think is important to understand is privilege. A lot of folks take the term privilege and, and, and see it as a very loaded term. Uh, essentially, all it talks about or all it means really is the systematically conferred advantages that individuals enjoy by virtue of their membership in a dominant group with access to resources and institutional power that are beyond the common advantages of marginalized citizens. So having privilege does not mean that your life is easy, doesn't mean that you've had everything handed down to you. Um, essentially just means that there are things in this world that you will never experience um, just based on who you are. Another term and the last term that I'm going to share with you before I continue on is the term intersectionality. This is a huge portion in why I'm sharing my reflections today for an affirming reflection um, is that intersectionality is the interconnected nature of social categorization such as race, class, gender, sexuality, um, poverty, anything like that, as they apply to a given individual or group and is regarded as creating an overlapping and independent systems of discrimination or a disadvantage. The concept of intersectionality is intended to illuminate um, the dynamics that have often been overlooked by, at that time, feminist theorists and movements. However, once it was established as a term, uh, the forms of oppression experienced by white middle class women were very different than those who were black, poor, or disabled women. So, in the feminist movement, um, they began seeking ways to understand how race 
gender and class combined to determine the female destiny. The term was coined by Kimberly Crenshaw in 1989 um, due, in a paper that she wrote about the oppression of African American women. And in her work, Crenshaw discusses black feminism, arguing that the experience of being a black woman cannot be understood in independent terms of being a black, being black or being a woman. And rather it must be included both interactions between the two identities, which she adds, reinforce one another. So those are the terms that I'll be using throughout. Um, I've used them not even in just this workshop or this live stream, but many other live streams as well. And the reason why I want to kind of reflect on everything that's happening is today is June 1st. And many of you know that June is officially Pride Month. Uh, we officially started that. It is Pride now. It is great. And as LGBTQ folks, we are really happy um, that Pride Month is upon us. But with everything that's happening um, in the States with rioting and um, the revolution and all the all the terms that are being thrown around with um, going against police brutality with the death of, of many, many, many uh, black men and women. And it's just, it's awful. So what I want to talk about is as queer people, as LGBTQ people, um, we have been through this. We have done exactly what's happening right now. Um, and many people forget about that because it seemed to be so long ago. Um, but as a recap, for those who are part of my history uh, live stream, we've been through this. We are we are going through another wave of of this rioting, this um, protesting, the gang rights. Um, and so, for example, for Pride on August 28th of 1971, roughly 100 people from Ottawa, Montreal, Toronto, and surrounding areas gathered in the pouring rain at Parliament Hill for Canada's first gay liberation protest and march. They presented a petition to the government with a list of 10 demands for equal rights and protections. Simultaneously, another much smaller group was roughly uh, 20 gay activists demonstrated in Robson Square in Vancouver. And a few years later, we had a similar um, gay rights liberation protest and march here in Edmonton as well. So this was Canada's first ever gay rights protest. It was a protest. And what were the results of these? A few years later, we saw that homosexuality was no longer considered a disorder. In 1973, two years later, Bill C-33, which stated that sexual orientation was then finally included into the Canadian Human Rights Act. That happened in 96. And then eventually in 2005, we had the Civil Marriage Act, where LGBTQ folks were able to get married and, and have same-sex marriages. And that was all resulted from that small group of people going to Parliament Hill and demanding for our rights. Similarly to what's happening in the States, people are demanding for their justice, for their rights. And even in Pride, we had all that great stuff happen years ago. But even just in 2016, we see that in Pride, we have issues um, with racism. In 2016, the Black Lives Matter Toronto chapter uh, took the opportunity as an honored group in the Pride Parade to halt the parade in an effort to address anti-Blackness within the already marginalized LGBTQ community. The group released a list, list of demands, including a commitment to increasing representation among Pride Toronto staff, and to prioritize the hiring of Black transgender women and Indigenous people. The group also viewed the shutdown as a moment to highlight how Toronto Pride and the Toronto Police were attempting to erase the department's poor relationship with the communities. Although met with mixed uh, reception from both the queer community and the outside communities, even here in Edmonton, this marked a collective outpour of frustration and demands for equality, and an end to racism for many queer, indigenous, and people of color who are being marginalized within our own queer community. We saw a similar protest like this happen in 2018, which then, um, it was a group of protesters from within our community who tempor temporarily stopped the Edmonton Pride Parade and demanded law enforcement and military members to, disinvite, to be disinvited from the parade and to have them, uh, not attend any future parades due to the community experiences of fear and discomfort with police. 
After a period of negotiation between the parade uh, organizers and protest organizers, parade um, organizers agreed to the request of the protest and the parade went on. Again, with this protest, there was already a mix of, of feelings from within and without uh, the queer community. And there was a lot of uh, frustrations and demands for equality and the end of racism within the, the queer community. We can even go even further and talk about Stonewall. Many of you know the history of Stonewall. I know I've talked about the history of Stonewall many, many, many times. But to, to, I want you all to listen to the story and see how similar it is to where we are right now over the weekend with um, everything that's going on in, in every city in the United States. So this is the history of Stonewall. In the early hours of June 28th, 1969, New York City police raided the Stonewall Inn, a gay club lo located in Greenwich Village in New York City. In the 1960s, homosexual relations were still illegal, illegal, we were illegal, um, in New York City. There was also a criminal statute that allowed police to arrest people who were wearing less than three gender appropriate articles of clothing. So trans people had to wear three gendered clothing on their person um, while they were dressing as the gender they are, just so that they would not get arrested. Armed with a warrant, the police officers entered the club and found bootlegged alcohol. They roughed up the patrons and arrested 13 people, including employees and people violating the state's gender appropriate clothing statute. Fed up with constant police harassment and social discrimination, angry patrons and neighborhood residents hung outside the bar rather than dispersing. This became increasingly agitated as the events unfolded and people were aggressively manhandled. The raid sparked a riot, which led to six whole days of protests and violent clashes with law enforcement outside the bar. The Stonewall riots served as a catalyst for the gay rights movement in the United States and around the world. And one of the one of the uh, trans women that were there that started with the riots, um, her quote says here. Uh, her name was Sylvia Rivera. I was a radical, a revolutionist. I am still a revolutionist. I am glad I was in the Stonewall riot. I remember when someone threw a Molotov cocktail and I thought, my God, the revolution is here. The revolution is finally here. So I want everyone to remember, those who are queer and those who aren't, that pride started as a protest against police brutality. Pride started as a protest by black transgender women. Pride started as a protest. And that pride will continue to be a protest until all of the rights and justices is achieved for all. Now that we reflected on pride and where we come from, from a queer perspective, and viewing this happening to our, our Black brothers and sisters and siblings, what, what can we do? What can I do as a white passing Indigenous person? What I have for you is the steps of being an ally. And I'll go through them with you today. Allyship, being an ally, is a person who fights for the equality of an oppressed group that they are not a part of. I am Indigenous. I am not Black. But I am an ally, or I attempt to be an ally as best as I can to the Black community. The first step in doing that is understanding your privilege. This does not mean to be a condemning word, it does not mean that you are rich, have an easy life, have everything handed to you, and you've never had a struggle or work hard. Trust me, I've done all of that. I'm not rich, I've never had an easy life, I um, had to struggle a whole bunch, I had to work hard to get where I am. But privilege shows that there are things in our world that we may not have to experience or ever have to think about. So these are some of the reflections that I had to think about. When was the last time you were stopped by police and feared for your life? I was stopped by police a few months ago and I did not fear my life. When was the last time you took a jog without worrying about violence? I took a jog, jog a few weeks ago 
I did not fear for my life. When was the last time you worried about your child not coming home because they were assaulted or arrested? I don't have a child, but I assure that if I did, it wouldn't be a fear that I had if they were white passing. Obviously, there would be other fears within that. The second step of being an ally to our, our Black siblings is listen and do your homework. They are not our teachers. <laughs> we have to do the work ourselves. We have to listen to what they're saying. We have to do our homework. There's thousands upon thousands of articles, stories that are being shared, resources that are being shared, and social media is a great tool to find those information. There are many ways that we can read upon what they're experiencing and what they're trying to share with us. And from there, that is our work that we need to do. A third step of being an ally to the Black community is speaking up, but not over. Everything that I'm sharing with you today is all coming from uh, Black Lives Matter chapters. There's all coming from Black activists. I'm sharing that information with you, not because I came up with it, not because I want to be a, a, a great <laughs> educator. I'm sharing that with you because I want to educate people. I want to share the things that people are saying in the community and share that with people in my community. We have to educate others. And it's not up to us to decide what is racist and what is not. And it is our journey and our goal to engage with those who share our identities. As a white passing person, I am called to call out injustices within my own white community. I can use my voice and my privilege as being white and having this platform to share the information that I need to share. Doing this is very uncomfortable, not gonna lie. And it's gonna be uncomfortable for everyone, but that's the point. It's gonna be uncomfortable because our pride was once uncomfortable. We are called to not speak over or take credit for things that the black communities have already been saying. <laughs> there are many grassroots activists, there are many uh, Black Lives Matter chapters. There are many groups, even in the city, that that support and advocate for uh, the Black community that are doing all of this work. And so what I'm saying today is not to overshadow that, but to lift that up and to share with you that there are great resources out there. The fourth step of being an ally to the Black community is mistakes. There's going to be mistakes. And all I have to do is apologize when we do so, learn from our mistakes, and commit to change and moving forward. There are things that I've done in the past that have been racist. And I have listened to why they are racist. I've apologized for my actions. And I have committed to a huge change in my life so that I do not perpetuate the same things I did as a youth. And I am moving forward. As many of you know, the last step of being an ally is an ally is a verb. This isn't something that's going to go away. This isn't something that's a week-long protest that we jump to the gun and we want to help and we want to advocate for the community. And then when it's all done and over with, we go back to our own communities and we stop talking about it. And that is one thing I fear about what's happening is that this won't go anywhere. Because once all of the hardship is done, all of us who are allies just disappear. And, and don't continue helping throughout the rest of the time. Being an ally is a verb. We must always keep attending workshops, doing the work and repeating this over and over and over again and refreshing ourselves with the info that we need to know every day. I don't have much else to say um, with this reflection. Um, I know this weekend I've been very <laughs> stressed with a lot of the things that are going on and hearing all of the awful things that are going on and just I'm taking the time to really reflect and, and see where I stand and where I can help in any way that I can. And so I don't got much else for you. These were kind of the, the things that have been fluctuating in my, my head and my brain today and I felt like it would be inappropriate for me to gloss over what's happening and to avoid that conversation as much as it's a hard conversation and I know 
everyone watching, you've been seeing it and hearing it throughout the last few days. Um, but I felt like I needed to use this platform to share a little bit of why from a, from a queer person sharing it with the queer community and the LGBTQ community that we <laughs> we can't excuse this. We we need to be there with our our black siblings because we were there. We had exactly this happening. Our pride was a protest. Our pride was not fun. It was rioting. It was fighting against police. It was fighting the policies, fighting the government, making that hard change. And it took years to do that. Years. The first Pride protest happened, oh, what was the date? <laughs> 71, I believe. The Stonewall happened in 69. Sexual orientation wasn't included in the Canadian human rights until 1960, or 1996. That's so many years of hard work from the communities to make that big change. And there's so many things that we need to do um, as well. And so I, I pray and I hope that with this, this huge event, rebellion, riots, whatever you wish to call it, happens, I call on you all who are watching to not let this die out and to have this be real change. I want you all to take the time to listen and learn from Black organizers and activists all over the world, especially here in Edmonton and what we can do here in our local area. They're doing so much work right now, and I encourage you to help in any way you can, if that's attending protests, if that's giving money um, to these organizations, if it's sharing information, um, stepping up as an ally and calling out uh, injustice. There are tons of ways in which you can be an ally. Um, and I definitely have not uh, talked about all of the assets of how you can do that. But I want to leave you all on this little quote here by Micah Bazat. Um, I want to leave you on this quote. I want you to think about it, take it, and reflect on it for the rest of the week as everything starts to unfold and we see where, where this goes. So this is the quote. No pride for some of us without liberation for all of us. And I really want this to be a theme this year for Pride, especially with everything going on, that as much as we have our Pride, there are others that don't have Pride. And it's not fully Pride unless we all have it. Thank you for joining me today for this quick um, reflection about the world and, and where we are at. Um, I really wanted to talk about this. I felt like it was very inappropriate to, to gloss over. So. Uh, I'm sorry if this is too much for you, um, and that it's it may be just information overload. I know um, I'm feeling the same way with everything on Facebook and Twitter, and just there's so much going on. Um, but I really want you to take this quote and, and to reflect on it for the week. And if you have any questions um, or concerns and want to talk to me privately, um, about other ways in which you can be an ally. If you have any other information that you wish to share with, with me that you'd like me to share, please do that. Um, there's many, many things that I have in my little uh, toolbox that I can share with folks who, who, who need more articles or more information. And they'd like to read some. I do have a lot of that. So please reach out to me if you are requiring more information. Um, I want to help in any way that you can. So thank you all. I will see you all next Monday at noon. Um, hopefully <laughs> I will be able to have time to talk about what I would like to talk about, um, but we'll see where we go from there. So join me next Monday at noon. I will see you then. And if not, I will see you all throughout the week. Again, please reach out if you have any questions or would like to talk more about this topic or any other topic. Thank you all for joining me. I will see you next week. Bye-bye.